be talking about Mocking Country, a scroll Italian project at the Australian National University. I'm Tabs, a developer and designer moving into DevRel. You can find me at ladyofcode.com or ladyofcode at any of these socials. I joined the project in 2018 and they originally were looking for a database developer because their previous project was a series of nested WordPress websites with custom databases. The current stack I'm looking at is Aurelia.js, Elixir, and Heurist at this point. Heurist is a specialist humanity software. The Laureate program is funded by the Australian National University and $3 million comes from the Australian Research Council grant. Don't get too excited, that's Australian dollars, which is about 2 million freedom dollars and 1.5 million pounds. The Research Centre for Deep History comes out of that. It expands history's time scale and scope. It focuses on human history in Australia, which is over 60,000 years old. It learns from indigenous history, including time, people's embeddedness in country, stories and song. And it focuses on community collaborative research. So my colleagues had um, done their field work around Australia, visiting indigenous communities um, to work with them. In 2019, that's when we finally got our brand, beautiful brand. Um, these are all my Y friends at the time we were expecting to build a digital atlas. This was the original first version of the site from the Wayback Machine. Thank you, Wayback Machine. No marking country yet. So that stack from that point was Gatsby, which is React, Strapi, and that's all sitting on our RHEL server. I was still expecting to probably use Heurist at some point, but we didn't, I guess. So marking country itself visualizes Australia's deep history, far beyond the two and a half centuries since the arrival of British ships. Scroll dragging is when your scrolling mechanism, so scroll wheel, the scrolling motion, gets hijacked and causes your browser to behave in ways you may not expect. It can be quite polarizing and people to this day hate it. From that we get scrolly telling, which is a portmanteau of scrolling and storytelling. So scroll jacking can be used well to tell stories. It also can be nice in some agency and portfolio websites. But outside of those, they're often a UX nightmare, so care has to be taken when implementing them. This is basically how it works. And in case it wasn't obvious, I built this website with a bunch of scroll triggers for some scrolly tell inception. 2020, COVID. Still nothing on marking country. 2021, small movement because we've been trying to get research for years. Um, we end up having a map on the site and I'm siloed from the team slowly because there's just too much content coming my way for me to handle. So it's funneled to me instead of um, having me in on all of the discussions. 2022, we have a soft launch of Marking Country. Finally, we have a demo video because there isn't enough to reliably live demo. Um, I'm still giving content the week before launch. There's no time to do testing. Um, there were mixed reviews as I was designing on the fly. One of my favorite pieces of feedback was that it was too colonial. Too colonial. Appropriate. Um, I fixed that because, I mean, years later my design skills have improved vastly. Top tip. Ensure people understand the difference between storyboards, wireframes, and mockups. If you are ever in a position where you have to provide these it is good to clarify exactly what each of these are. We had issues. <laughs> so there was a drastic redesign uh, in which I attempted to capture more of the original brand. You can see the resemblance a little bit on the on the, the site. So it finally launches again. In October 2023, with less than two weeks to go, I'm adding GSAP, the Green Sock Animation Platform Libraries. I hate it. I'm still giving content. I'm still adding new features. I convert everything to Spelt. Seems to go well. So it took about a week. It was worth it. I think it was worth it. And the stress. It was worth it. 
So the final stack is pretty much just Svelte and WordPress. The university did choose WP Engine to host the WordPress websites. So I guess we'll see how that goes. And here's my site being launched in Washington, D.C. by Kevin Rudd, Australian ambassador to the U.S. This was a big moment for me. Ah, oh, funny story. He actually attended my 2016 graduation and sat next to my friend who spent the entire time wondering why people were coming up to this man asking for photographs like a celebrity. Because he was. And now it's 2024, the number of components I've built has doubled and I am still fixing bugs. Okay, quick note, because I'm about to hate on React because it's fun. I do believe React has its strengths. I just had a lot of fun converting things from React to Svelte. Let's go. The first example we have is converting the useRef in React to the bind directive in Svelte. This is the relevant piece of code, ref equals L box refs dot current. And in Svelte, we simply just have bind this equals box index. GSAP does operate similarly in each. So when it is set up, there's a kind of a context created and then the animation has to be cleaned up. In React, it's done inside use effect. In Svelte, it's done in on mount. Uh, the cleanup happens here inside use effect in React, but in Svelte, we use the on destroy lifecycle function. I ended up making my own function to do cleanup eventually. This was fun, converting all of the React code using use state and use effect into Svelte's reactive functions and variables. Arrays was also quite straightforward, changing over the map to the each logic blocks. <laughs> Not a big difference here. The conditionals, in my opinion, the Svelte version is easier to read. Pages and roots. From this I learnt that sometimes things being opinionated is good for me and better than my own opinions. Oh, I got rid of SAS. This this felt like I was choosing joy. I could just move my CSS into the Svelte components and use one global CSS file instead of having to use a bunch of partials. It was great. Ah, yes, getting rid of React and its one-way binding to make way for Svelte's two-way binding was a pleasure. As much as I love managing state in React, I'd rather not. So I didn't actually have to write the code on the left here, thankfully. By the time I was using Svelte stores, I was creating more menus, more advanced features. I was just grateful that I didn't have to deal with React context and further state management. This is an example of one of my simpler components. It uses PhotoSwag, which is a JS library for media. Fairly straightforward. Uh, we just have the options here. I create the light box and it, it's just created in mockup. It was a pain to add video, particularly to the galleries. And this is an example of the caption scroller component, which you will see a demo of shortly. We've got the GSAP code here, just the general markup on the right. There is the tick function that I had to use because sometimes the, Enjoy the demo. G sub code we tried to execute before everything was fully loaded. So that seemed to help. These are my sources. And thank you for reliving that journey with me and for the opportunity to do my first tech talk at Svelte Summit. I hope you have a good day. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line.